Okay, I have the agenda and let's uh, call the meeting to order the July 14th um, meeting of the Franklin Township Trails Committee virtual meeting. Uh, Jim Kuligowski, chair present. Vanessa Jones, vice chair present. Anne Marie Orlusky here. Uh, Chuck Martin, secretary here. John Erling here. Mark Mark Fortin here. Bill Kramer lays on here. Okay, it looks like it's a roll call. Uh, approval of the June 2021 minutes. I was not here, but um, uh, someone want to make a motion? Or any any? First of all, are there any uh, changes or uh, additions that uh, people noticed in the minutes? I had indicated one minor change uh, via email to Chuck, but uh, I don't I don't see it in the copy that was circulated by Tara. So I would still say that. Uh, uh, yeah, I, I, I'm actually making that change in my notes now, Mark. Uh, okay. So, well, the, uh, the, the re requested change is that where it refers to uh, Tom Lewis will have materials for the next meeting. I think he really just stated that Tom Lewis would have uh, materials at a future meeting. He didn't. He didn't commit to having them th for this meeting. All right, and I just changed the wording to uh, uh, Mr. Lewis indicated he would provide more detailed information concerning the proposed path at a future trails meeting. So I'm saving that file and. Uh, Okay, then I would make a motion to approve the minutes with the minor modification that Chuck just stated. Well, second. Okay, all those in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carries. All right, uh, Tara. Okay. Megan available, or do we want to uh, wait for her? She's still having difficulty. I sent her an email. I haven't heard back yet. Um, I, maybe she's trying to get on. So no, I haven't heard anything yet. We can move forward, I guess, and then come back to her when she comes on, if that works. That's absolutely acceptable. Okay. Do we want to go with the pathways and trails, or do we want to go with new business? The update from Carl Hawk. Maybe, yeah, maybe we can just go down the new business and then we can save that, you know, until she gets on because I don't know how long her presentation will be. That's um, fine by me. So, um, we had a lot going on this month with uh, Carl and DPW. So, we are actually meeting next Monday. We usually meet the second Monday, but we rescheduled for the third Monday. So, I'll have a better update next month, but I can report that. Um, the benches are ordered, so hopefully they should be in soon. Um, what else? Uh, oh, uh, um, Chris Williams, he's the chair of the Shade Tree Commission and also a member of the Open Space Advisory Committee. Um, who else? Bob Puskis, Carl, and I are going to meet at Negri Napoti um, in the last week of July. Uh, just to kind of stake out where the mowing should take place because last year no mowing took place there and no burn was done there. So this year the mowing has to be done and we're going out there because there has been like some different uh, perspectives at the open space committee about where the mowing should be. So it was recommended that we meet out on the site, um, discuss what the management in terms of mowing is for right now, and then move forward that way. Um, also prepared an application for prescribed burn at John Clyde Memorial Native Grasslands Preserve, Preserve which will be the same burn pattern that we did before, but also one for Negri. So a burn will also happen there at the end of this year, beginning of 2022, and that's going to kind of be in conjunction with this mowing. So Carl will be out there when we have that to kind of discuss what equipment DPW has, what the, you know, and this will really kind of get a good perspective from everyone there um, about what to do with that. Okay, uh, Eric, could you tell me again, please, uh, for the record, uh, who will be meeting at Negri? And uh, uh, also, is this 
uh, going to be a contract mowing like we have done in previous years, a contractor based mowing, or is this public works mowing? No, this will be public works mowing, but with the guidance of uh, the people at the meeting are going to be me, Chris Williams. He's the chair of the Shade Tree Commission and also a member of the Open Space Advisory Committee. And Bob Puskis, he's the chair of the Open Space Advisory Committee. And Carl Houck, as you know, is the director of DPW. Um, and DPW does have the equipment to perform the mowing. They just kind of want to get guidance as to exactly where they should mow and figure out what type of equipment needs to be used that's best. So that's why we're all going to meet on site. If for some reason we were to meet on site and the, um, and like the, uh, DPW director said, you know, I don't have that kind of equipment or this isn't going to work, then I guess we'll have to look at the contract mowing, but we do have the equipment, so. Okay, thank you. you hear me? Hi, Tara, I just had a question when, because Negri is kind of close to my heart. What are they, what are their considerations for what areas they're going to be mowing? Do you know what they're going to be focusing on? Um. I don't know exactly until we get there. I know that Chris had made a recommendation. You know, let me see if I can find it in my notes here. Um, I'm going to look for it in my notes while we're talking, but I don't think anything has been decided upon because there's been some different discussions about where Negri should be mowed and not mowed. Yeah, I'm just wondering what are they discussing? Like, what are they? What are their thoughts? Well, the first thought is, is that the mowing, they want the mowing to happen after August 1st, uh, so that it doesn't interfere with nesting season. Um, I think the main idea right now is to kind of just clean it up, but with the thought of the prescribed burn coming, um, I think that's kind of where the discussion needs to happen, because if the prescribed burn happens, doing too much mowing is not going to be helpful. Um, uh, actually, I think that is that the reverse. Uh, actually, I think you want to do the mowing as a prefatory move to the prescribed burn, so we can get a stubble burn. Right. On, okay. That's on, those, I... on those areas, plus the fact that uh, uh, are you going to remove uh, the 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 uh, uh, invasive trees uh, before you do this mow? So, yeah, so what I, what I meant to say, so basically what I meant was we're not going to mow the entirety of the, of the property all the way down. I think the hope is that we'll do some mowing where the prescribed burn will happen um, exactly to Chuck's point. And the invasive trees, yes, will be spot treated and removed following the burn. Now, that's the, the talk right now. We have to have this meeting on site. Anne Marie, if you want to come, you're more than welcome, of course. Because I know you know Negri, so I can get you that date if you want to attend with us. You're absolutely 100% more than welcome. Sure. I would love to. I don't know if I can work into my work schedule, but, you know, certainly let me know, please. I'm, okay, I'm I curious will. what your thoughts are. And uh, and like Chuck said, we talked about it. I'm, I'm glad that they're going to mow first and then burn and then hopefully get those invasive trees out of the, at the same time. Um, it could be a game changer. I mean, we've had a tremendous, I mean, we had a lovely fire by walk, but the, um, the, I mean, there's certainly a lot more weeds and grass now at John Clyde, and it'd be interesting to see what would happen with the second burn. But um, I don't know. There's just a lot of concerns when you look out over the whole thing. So after, so the other thing that they will be doing DPW is right after August 1st when doing this mowing, when doing the um, the work at Negri, then they're also going to go and spot treat the invasives that were left from the burn at John Clyde and remove the invasives there. So that'll be done after August 1st, shortly after August 1st, like um, almost immediately after August 1st. So those will be taken care of as well. Because they're everywhere. It's a sea of invasive. So right. um, it's a huge undertaking at both places. So yeah. I mean, it's, it's a lot more than spot treating. 
Right. So the burn, I prescri so the prescribed burn at John Clyde is going to take a few different attempts um, to do it because there was a lot of invasives there. That's what's been told to us by the fire safety service. Um, and then the follow up is, is that we have to go in and do the spot treatment and the, the removal of the invasive. So that's like now we're moving on to the next step of that. But yeah, absolutely. It's going to take a few efforts to get that complete. And I'm assuming that the fire service or whoever does it has had a lot of success in removing invasives through this method in the past. Yeah, I mean, they do this at six mile run. They do it in the Pinelands. Uh, they do it at bear, you know, for summers at county park system. They've done it before, so they do it often. It just takes a few burns to actually make it work. Okay, I mean, that's hopeful because it's a little disconcerting right now. And, um, and I haven't seen what they've done in other places. So I really, I have nothing to compare it to except for what I see. And right. And it's a beautiful place. Don't get me wrong, but in terms of accomplishing our goal, it's got a ways to go. Yeah. Yep. Yeah, definitely. Uh, uh, Tara, did uh, uh, you send a meeting uh, notice to Bill Bowman? I uh, just got a message from him asking if the meeting would start soon. I. I uh, sent a heads up to Bill that Megan would be speaking tonight and the importance of this gold award. Uh, and uh, he got back saying, is the meeting starting soon? Uh, 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 everyone's here. I see Megan's on too now. So everyone is, is here. Is, is, is Bill Bowman on? No. Uh, I'm going to send a message to him. Uh, is, is the meeting... Uh, uh, listed on the as uh, the meeting details that you can click on listed in the township uh, agenda site. It is, uh, it is and yeah, it's on the front page. There's a link. There's a WebEx link. I you know I can't check it out now. See if it's accurate. Yeah. Yeah, that's that's your one to yeah, that should be it. Yep. Uh, can I if I if I send him the link that you send him this email, will that get him on? No, I can send him. You have to send him the attendee version. All right. Um, I'll uh, do you have you know what? Let me email that to you, Chuck, and then you can sell send it. Okay. Uh, okay. okay. Uh, uh, I can send it. I can send the one I got today. Uh, okay. Thank you, Phil. That would be great. Back to the prescribed burn and so forth. Um, did did the spot treatment of invasives actually happen after the initial burn this past January at John Clyde? No. no. It did not. They did not finish the burn until April. Um, they actually did the second, the last part of the burn on Easter, which was when on Easter Sunday is when they did that version, the last prescribed burn. And then this is where, this is why we're having this meeting coming up. There's some discussion back and forth amongst the open space advisory committee. If, you know, burning should happen during nesting season, if so, where, should that not be an issue if we're far a certain distance away from it? So that's why we're having this on site meeting because basically once April 15th happens until August 1st, we don't mow or do anything in certain areas where the nesting birds are. Um, so I think having this meeting on site will kind of answer some of those questions. Well, that, that's going to help Negri, but John Clyde, since we didn't do this treatment, I mean, it's it's a jungle. It's, it's currently a jungle of invasives. Right, DPW, yeah, I know DPW is going to also do that spot treatment and removal of the invasives after August 1st, so right but, after. But there's not gonna be spot treatment there. You don't have spots, you have 
entire fields of invasives that are as high as our our shoulders. Right. I mean, we can definitely have DPW mow out there as well. That's an option we can definitely do, and then also go forward with the burn in December, January. Right. Yeah. Whatever it is, I don't know what they're planning, but spot treatment of the invasives is is just not not even an option for John Clyde right now. Okay, so I will, we're going to be talking about both sites. We're just meeting at Negri, so I will discuss that with them that, you know, we're probably going to have to do a full DPW. We'll have to do a full mowing at John Clyde as well. Yeah, we, we, we at the Firefly Walk, we, people kept asking me, where was the burn done? And I couldn't point it out because you can't tell that a burn was done. It's, it's completely grown in. You can't tell at all. Right. Mm. Uh, if I could interject, uh, I, I have some concerns about using the term spot treatment. Uh, a lot of the uh, woody invasives that you're going to have to remove for this burn are autumn olive. And I don't think uh, we quite realize how arduous a task that's going to be. There's a lot of them and autumn olive uh, bushes or trees, depending, they're called both. Uh, they have multiple stems on them, and uh, the the treatment that should be done is to cut the stems and paint the stems very quickly uh, with an herbicide. Uh, usually, it's uh, glyphosate or uh, another one, which is called uh, called the one I can't remember. Uh, 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 but but uh, uh, anyway, I mean. This is really going to be a big task. Uh, it's not just something that we can mark go out and mark a few trees and get one or two people out to to cut and do. It's going to require quite a bit more effort than that, and uh, I'm concerned about whether this is going to get done. Uh, the uh, the other thing is that the treatment. I mean, the idea was was to actually cut the cut the woody plants so they would provide more fuel for the burn at ground level, and uh, so uh, uh, this is an important consideration as well. Uh, may I attend this meeting, or am I like persona non grata here? I, uh, oh, yeah, absolutely. It's you know you're more than welcome. Um, yeah, for sure. We're just meeting at Negri. Um, we want to come to an agreement. The goal is of this meeting to come to an agreement about how to um, manage, you know, what to do with the mowing versus the burning and versus the nesting birds and all that kind of like get everyone together. If the option too is that this maybe needs to be done like a contracted job, I mean, that's definitely something we can talk about as well. Well, uh, yeah, I, I'm, I, I honestly, I think, you know, I've been, I've been struggling to try to figure out this issue for, for quite some time now. And I don't, I can't really give you a solution. Uh, the burns I think are important in terms of maintaining what we have there. But, uh, first of all, I'm not sure whether the fire service is really up to doing the number of burns and in the period of time that we need. Uh, they say they can only do burns 12, 12 days a year. Uh, and they're burning a lot of other stuff in the state as well. Uh, is that, uh, do, do they have the capacity to uh, do annual burns? Uh, uh, yeah, I mean, that's what, that's what they do. For, for the near future. Uh, and the, the burns are not necessarily the entire fix because the other invasives are actually fire resistant. As we can see right now, we saw that uh, with the uh, uh, lightning bugs uh, that uh, uh, the, the mugwort came up even better after the burn because mugwort actually comes up from the roots. It's, just, mm -hmm. it's not affected by this, uh, along with goldenrod. We've got large patches of goldenrod now that's uh, uh, in, at Griggstown. And at Negri, we've got the knapweed. And the napweed has this huge seed bank already uh, that's established there. So, uh, you know, although the burning is, is I think, essential, uh, we're going to have to think about other ways 
that we can help restore this, or maybe we can't restore it. Maybe we'll have to restore some sort of intermediate state, uh, e environment, ecological state, uh, that would still serve as a good habitat uh, for birds. Uh, right now, the ecological state that you're in in these two is quite what. Uh, has now been uh, described as shrubland. It's not grassland. And Audubon, I noticed just recently, Audubon has started using the term shrubland. Uh, that's habitat. It's not the same habitat as uh, uh, what the birders would like to see with a grassland, because it's there are some of the birds that they would they would like to bring back that probably won't stay in that shrubland habitat. But it's still a good habitat. But the problem is that this habitat is evolving, and it's going to if 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 we don't do it well and carefully, it's going to end up as a very sterile habitat, which doesn't support much wildlife at all. Uh, uh, for example, you could go to the uh, six mile run lot just just south of the uh, uh, Snyder Farm on Middlebush Road. And if you get past the edges there, what you will see is an open cedar forest. And uh, that open cedar forest is not a productive habitat for most of our native uh, birds and, and, and other animals. Uh, so, like I said, I don't have the solution. I, I, I can't figure out what the solution is, but, I, but uh, we, we got to do something to uh, maintain this burning as a part of it. We may have to go in and, and uh, try to remove the herbaceous uh, uh, materials by spraying or uh, plowing up and reseeding. I don't, I don't know. Uh, and I don't and I don't think my environmental scientist friends know either uh, that they can really make a prediction at this point because these invasives are new. Autumn olive and and uh, uh, calorie pear and uh, the spotted knapweed are a new type of invasive that has only recently come to fore. Uh, much like the spotted lanternflies are a new invasive that's now becoming a a uh, actually we find finding out a worldwide situation. So I'm sorry, didn't mean to get on a soapbox, but but uh, uh, we've got some work ahead of us, and we need to we need to think carefully about. You know, proceeding and, and uh, developing an effective maintenance plan. I will mute myself. I agree. <laughs> it's a complicated problem, and I think you. I can't add anything more to it. Just that we're very concerned about the direction we're heading in with those two grasslands. <laughs> I will add the same comment that uh, Chuck knows it has stated a lot about it. And, uh, you know, if he doesn't have an answer, I mean, I'm sure there's people who might have some answers, but the point is we let this go and got way behind. And if we keep dribbing and drabbing and saying, we're going to do a little spot thing here and there, and then don't get to it for whatever reason or another, and, and we don't keep up with it, we're going to be no good. So we, it, it really needs focus and attention and not this little piecemeal bit that we've been giving it. Right. Yeah, I, I hear everything you guys are saying. I mean, we had the grasslands management plan form. You know, we worked on that and we had it formed by the Autobahn. We're following the recommendations. Um, Chuck was there when the forest, when the fire safety service was there. Um, and they made it very clear that treating these invasive species was going to take a few burns. So um, we have the application in early so we can get in on their schedule as soon as possible. I think they're trying as you know, they're getting there. They are getting there. They have the capacity because they came, you know, they came out on Easter Sunday to do it. So I think that, you know, we get the application, in, which we did already for the upcoming season. Um, you know, we get the mowing done in between and I think we'll start to see, but you know, that first burn, it releases a lot of seeds. So that is like, you know, it's almost like you're kind of seeing like it's gonna get a little worse before it gets better kind of thing. But yes, we have to keep working at it. We have to keep treating it in these two ways, the burning and the, and the mowing and the spot treating of the herbicide and, 
and all that. So, yes, we are working on it. I 100% agree. Tara, who, who would do the, uh, the herbicides or, or who was responsible for that? So we DPW can do it under the direction of, you know, given enough direction, they can absolutely do that actual treatment. But if for some reason, it seems like this is really better, you know, a job that we find another type of landscaper or someone like that to do, then that's a route we can look at also. Anywhere the reason, is, is Bill in the meeting yet? Yes. And and the reason the spot treatment didn't get done is just because the timing was too late in April. Right, because the second burn had to happen the first day that we were there for the burn. Um, there was a lot to burn. They burned probably 75% of it and tried to burn one field. And just because of the wind um, and some of the uh ground cover being a little damp it didn't burn well so they needed to come back and do the second burn which weather wise they couldn't do until april it was whatever day easter sunday was so then we run into the issue of treating the grasslands when the nesting birds are there and that's kind of what happened this year is that april happened there is some thought that you know doing anything when the nesting birds is there is an issue um, which I don't, you know, we, that's why we have to have this meeting and, and talk and really kind of like figure it out. Okay, thanks. Good. Okay, are we ready to uh, move on to the presentation? Spotted lantern flies. Yeah, I believe so. Megan, you're, can you hear me? Yeah, I can hear you. Okay, um, is your video working okay and everything? Um, yeah, I think so. There you are. Can I you see, you. see me. Okay, yes. Okay. <laughs> I'm gonna um, make you the presenter in just one second, but everyone, this is Megan House. She is the Girl Scout that has been working very hard on the spotted lantern fly education. Um, and we've talked a few times and she is very impressive. That's the best word I can use is very impressive because um, the presentation, when you see it, you'll be able to see how much research she put into it and how much time. And I'm going to let you, Megan, talk about everything you did. I don't want to like take any of your presentation away, but I just want to make sure everyone knows that, you know, it's been a lot of work and, you know, we really appreciate your efforts. So I'm going to make you, um, Megan, I'm going to make you the presenter. Okay. Uh-huh. All right. Okay. And it says passing. Okay. You should be good to go. Um, so on the bottom of your screen where it says share. Oh, that, yep. There you go. Yep, perfect. You guys can see? Yeah. Okay. Yes. Okay, so hi, I'm Megan House, and um, this is, I'm working on my gold award. It's the highest award in Girl Scouts, and um, for my project, I wanted to raise awareness of the spotted lanternfly. So, um, the spotted lanternfly is an invasive species. So an invasive species is a living thing that has a negative impact on its on a new environment. And when it is introduced to a new area where it doesn't belong, it can tend to flourish and overpopulate and it hurts the native plants and animals around. So this is the spotted lanternfly life cycle. Um, after the egg, after the eggs hatch, they become early nymphs. And then about now, like July through August, they'll be um, they'll become late nymphs and then they'll become adults. So right now, um, they're most of them are like late nymphs, but some of them are still in the early nymph stage. And this is what an egg mass looks like. Um, a single egg mass holds about 30 to 60 eggs. 
and each one is about an inch long. Um, spotted lanternflies lay their eggs on smooth surfaces and tree bark, and it looks like a patch of mud, but over time, it'll dry out and crack, and then the eggs will hatch. So this is what um, the adult spotted lanternflies look like. They have a yellow and black body and two sets of wings, and they're about an inch long and half an inch wide. So the reason of why spotted lanternflies are so bad is because they kill our trees. They have this mouth part that they stick into the tree to suck out all the fluids that they need to survive. And then um, this will weaken the tree and it'll eventually die. Um, it, they ooze the sap out of the tree and it loses um, their fluids. This is, um, they produce this substance called honeydew, which is basically the spotted lanternfly's waste, and it creates this sooty mold fungus underneath the tree. And it covers the tree and it'll affect its ability to perform photosynthesis because it blocks out the sun. The spotted lanternfly's favorite tree is um, the tree of heaven, also known as the Alanthus tree, and it is also an invasive species. And in like the 1700s, um, people thought it was a good tree because it grew so easily. So they planted it in cities a lot. So it grew everywhere. And um, so now spotted lanternflies are all over the place eating this tree, and they can also be found in cities. Um, they eat over 70 different kinds of trees and plants. So because the Atlantis tree is all over cities, there are spotted lanternflies all over cities as well. And it's a huge problem in Philadelphia. This is just a slogan to um, remember, see it, stomp it. Um, so the spotted lanternfly also has serious impacts on people. They kill our fruit trees and hardwood trees, which um, affects us because we won't be able to have boards to build houses or furniture, and we won't have many different kinds of fruit, including grapes, and without grapes, there's no wine, and we can't have flooring or doors either. And over half a billion dollars in the economy is lost every year just because of how many spotted just because of how many trees spotted lanternflies kill. And also hundreds of people are losing their jobs every year because businesses are going out of business. So um, spotted lanternflies are great hitchhikers. They cling to car tires and cars and trailers and other outdoor items. So always try to um, keep your windows rolled up and try not to park near trees because spotted lanternflies will just hop on your car. And then they can also be found on other items such as outside toys, coolers, wood, backpacks, anything outside. And then this is um, a link to the full New Jersey Department of Agriculture list of everything that spotted lanternflies can be found on. And then this is just another slogan to remember. It's look before you leave. To always, to remember to always look over your car and anything you have before leaving an area so that you might, um, so that you can prevent spreading the spotted lanternfly even more. So spotted lanternflies are completely harmless to humans. Like they might hop on you or like, land on you, but they're not going to bite you. They're not going to hurt you. Um, part of the reason of why they're such a problem is because they don't really have a lot of predators. Really, the only thing that likes to eat it is the praying mantis and the predatory stink bug. Yeah. And then um, last summer, I went on a hike and um, we saw a bunch of spotted lanternflies on this tree. 
and so we squished them and then immediately after um, a bee came over because it was attracted to the honeydew. Um, last summer, we also saw a spotted lanternfly on our porch, and there was also a praying mantis there. So we tried to see if the praying mantis would eat the spotted lanternfly, but it got away. So birds don't like to eat spotted lanternflies because they it tastes sour to them. And also when they see the red on the spotted lanternfly, they think it means danger. And then this is just another slogan to remember, join the battle, beat the bug. So there are a few ways to remove eggs. The first way is um, you can use like an old gift card to scrape over them, to flatten and pop them. Or you can also scrape them into a Ziploc bag that is filled with hand sanitizer. But if you do this, you have to make sure that the hand sanitizer gets like all over the eggs so that um, it will kill them. And then you can just throw the bag away. And then these are a few ways you can get them off of your trees. First, you can put like sticky tape around your tree. But if you do this, you should put fencing over it as well so that birds don't get stuck. And you can also take a shop vac or a bottle and take them directly off your trees that way. And then these are just some videos that I found on YouTube that show how to make really good traps. So a lot of people, when they hear about this problem, they're like, let's just spray pesticides on it. The problem is pesticides are not an effective way of getting rid of spotted lanternflies because they move around so much that you need to spray like a huge area to get the pesticide on them. And then these pesticides would also harm other bugs that like ladybugs and we don't want to hurt any other insect. So this is um, a chart I made that shows what the spotted lanternfly looks like and what stage it is in in each month of the year and then what method you can use to um, get rid of them. And then leave no trace. So normally it is never okay to hurt nature ever. So the spotted lanternfly is a really invasive species and it's having horrible effects on our environment and the economy. So we need to try and stop it, but don't hurt anything else in nature. And then scientists are coming up with new ways to get rid of spotted lanternflies. They're training dogs to sniff out spotted lanternfly eggs. And they're also trying to use um, fungi to get rid of them as well. The, this dog in the picture over here, its name is Lucky. Um, so this is just some random information. So spotted lanternflies are related to stink bugs. They are native to China and Southeast Asia. And they came to New Jersey in 2018. They're also known as Asian plant hoppers and they are most active at dusk. So these are the counties that have spotted lanternflies. And if you find a spotted lanternfly in a county that is not on this list, you should call this, um, you should call this number or email that address. There's also an app that I found. It's called the Squishar app, and it's a free app where you can track how many spotted lanternflies you find and squish. And then these are all the websites and resources that I use to find my information. Oh, um, I have a survey. So if you guys don't mind, I'm gonna um, put this in the chat when I'm finished. And then can you guys like fill this out for me really quickly? Um, so this is, I worked with the environmental club at my school to um, create educational activities because I did my presentations in schools as well. So I wanted the kids to have like fun activities to do after that. 
And then that's the end of my presentation. Thank you so much for listening. Thank you, Megan. I love this presentation. I think it's so informative. Can you tell um, the committee what you did um, besides this presentation, like in terms of your flyers and the changes to the website and all that? Um. Yeah, I can. First, how do I stop sharing my screen? Oh, at the very bottom, I think if you just go to share, oh, sorry, wait, at the very top center of your screen, there should be like an orange tab and it says stop oh, sharing. Okay. Yeah, okay. There you go. Thank you. You're welcome. Okay. Yeah, maybe show them the QR code and everything because that's really interesting. Yeah. Okay, so I put my survey in the chat. So if you guys don't mind filling that out, that would be really great. Um, okay, so for besides my presentations, I also um, I also worked with Tara and um, Charles Martin and Diana Martin and a few and Vanessa and a few other people to put. Um, to distribute my flyer, um, the New Jersey Department of Agriculture flyer to um, a bunch of trail kiosks and even a few parks in the library, um, the Franklin Township Library. And um, just the other day I went and I gave them out at um, the Firefly Walk. So um, I put, I took the flyer and I put a QR code on the bottom of it which um, when you scan it, it leads to my presentation. And so I, I wanted to put the flyer at all the trails so that when people visit, they'll see it and they'll know to, um, to squish the bug when they see it so that we can try to stop, we can try to slow down at least the spread of the spotted lantern fly. Awesome. And we did put, so if you go, go to our website, committee members at any point, if you look on the Environmental Commission page, on the trails page, um, on the front page of the website, you'll see the flyer and the QR code will allow you to go right to the presentation. Uh, but the flyer is posted in all those areas. Chuck and Diana were super helpful in getting them posted um, out at some of the open spaces and the kiosks. Um, and it's also on our Facebook page, our township Facebook page, and also as like a commercial on FTTV. Um, and Megan, and we'll probably put this, this meeting always gets put on FTTV as well. So you giving the presentation can be on there too. So it's really going to be widespread, which I think will be great. Um, and then I guess before we take any questions, can you just explain what the what in, what's involved with getting the gold award? Just maybe let any of the committee members know that don't know what you know you have to do, what it means, you know, things like that. Um, okay, so the gold award, as um, as I said before, it's the highest award in Girl Scouts. So it's this big project that you need to do where you lead other people and. It, it has to be a sustainable project where you're helping people and or or the environment and you're leading other people and um, you learn a lot of a lot of skills like time management and um, so yeah it's just a huge project where you're leading other people and you're also helping the environment or people or what whatever you want to do mm -hmm. you're making a difference in the world that's great well great presentation does anyone have questions or comments for megan oh i think the great mayor job. has one <laughs> thank hi megan it's mayor kramer how are you hi i'm good how are you good that was a terrific presentation. I was just wondering if you knew in what stage, which whether it's the nymph stage or when it's a, a moth, what stage is it actually eating up the plants? Um, so in the early nymph stage and the late nymph stage, they actually um, eat the leaves of the trees 
And then when they become adults, they feed on um, the trunks and um, the limbs of the trees. Interesting, thank you. Mm -hmm. Yeah, uh, thanks, Megan. Uh, did you mention that uh, you had actually gone to and, and taught uh, classes at uh, some of the schools in the area? Uh, I thought I heard that you had done that as well. Uh, Oh, we've lost your sound. <laughs> Sorry. Um, so what I did was I presented because this um, one of the things I needed to do was I needed to like lead people. So I reached out to like the science supervisor um, for the Franklin Township schools and I reached out to um, the PE department and I presented my slideshow to um, the teachers and um, the supervisor and in kind of like a train the trainer way. So I would present to them and then they would present to all their classes. So I was leading people that way. That's great. And I know I know, um, and Meg had done, um, she'd recorded herself doing it as well. And I was able to share that with the teaching staff at my school and for them yeah. to then carry it on. And, and some of them chose to share that with their students because it was, it was so well done. Um, so I think that was really helpful. And that's something else. I don't know, Meg, if you'd want, if that's something else we want to post on the website as well, you know, because um, that's such a nice uh, encompassed version of the presentation too. <laughs> Okay, yeah, um, that would be great. Meg, I know when we were talking about the Firefly hike, you were talking about some other ideas you had for like promoting this. Oh, yeah, um, I had an idea of um, getting, um, you saw the flyer, I don't know if um, other people saw the flyer, but the New Jersey Department of Agriculture flyer, I, there's another version of it where um, I'm really hoping to maybe get it on like a billboard or something. So. Do we have a public works uh, space on these uh, electronic billboards that uh, uh, we might be able to display uh, a bit of uh, one of Megan's uh, flyers or something, something appropriate for that? Is it Uh, hmm. you, mean, you mean the low resolution ones? Uh, uh, the, the ones near exit 10 down the highway there, did, did the township have some sort of arrangement that uh, they could have? <laughs> no, the, the township actually tried to stop those from going up. I remember that but, too. <laughs> but um, the uh, slashes who are very nice, um, you, fell over backwards trying to help us out during uh, the height of COVID to announce things. And they uh -huh. ironically put up our ads on their billboard. So um, uh, let, let me, I, I don't want to put the slashes in the spot. They make money off of that, but let me approach him and see um, what I could do. No, no promises there. They, they've got to earn a living. Sure. But what would you have in mind? What would you put up there? Um, I sent it to Tara. Hold on. Let me see if I can pull it up. Um, is it your flyer? Is it your flyer, Megan? Um. Hold There's on. also legalities when the town asks in favor of a company. So I've, I've, I got to, I got to watch my steps here. But <laughs> one, one place maybe we could put it, Megan. I was just thinking. I don't know if this would work because you have such nice graphics and there's no graphic here. But the Somerset County 
uh, commissioners, right? It's at the corner of um, Findern and what is that road? Finder, it's um, Bridgewater, I guess that is. Findern and not Route 28, the other one. That's right behind, it's behind it. Uh, oh, I know. Yeah, just over the bridge. Right. They have a, um, a digital sign there. And any, not any, but much of the information that is related to municipalities can be sent in there. All it really is is words, though, but maybe we can at least send, you know, we can put something on there that says, like, beware of the spotted lantern blah, blah, and then put the township's website that leads to your presentation. Okay. Maybe one thing, at least, it won't look as but at least it's maybe something we can do and it's free and um, the county's public information office takes care of that and it kind of just rotates through. Okay. So that's one option. Hold on one second. So just to also point out that um, Meg just finished her sophomore year at Franklin High School. So um, I know the the it's it's she's a senior in Girl Scouts. So I was confused. I was helping her in her project. I thought she was a senior. And I was surprised to find out that she just finished her sophomore year at Franklin High School. Very impressive. Yeah, I was too. She really is great at presenting and her research was so thorough. You know, it's, I think it's really good. I think people really will like the QR code that I think is something that people really, you know, don't take for granted because it's, you know, it's easy to see. You can get it while you're outside right on your phone. I think that's great. Hey, I have a quick question. Just uh, have, have uh, anyone on the committee or Megan, have you seen spotted lantern flies on any of our in, in Somerset, Franklin Township? Uh, yeah, first, I've seen them a lot. Yeah, we we first spotted them two years ago. Uh, individuals actually on the Bunker Hill trails, uh, uh, Vanessa's trails on Bunker Hill. And uh, uh, we went out. Uh, Megan and uh, with Megan and her mom and and uh, I can't remember the graduate student's name, but it was Ann uh, uh, Ann Nielsen's graduate student. Ann Nielsen is a Rutgers Extension uh, uh, professor who's uh, specializing in spotted lantern flies, and her graduate student uh, is studying the what's called the phenology or the life cycle of the lantern flies looking for places where you might be able to intervene in their development. And uh, Megan and her mom had actually uh, spotted an a, a area that's like the epicenter uh, in Bridgewater uh, out at the intersection of uh, uh, Kennedy Rock Road and Route 22, that shopping complex there. Uh, there are just huge numbers of egg masses on the red maple trees there. And uh, Anne's uh, graduate student uh, put up some traps uh, uh, for them. This was at, at the early stage. I went back the next day and there were probably a thousand nymphs in that one trap. Uh, Megan says that she went out recently and didn't find any in the traps. Uh, Megan, I'm wondering whether somebody sprayed those trees. Uh, because, I mean, they were all over the place and the, what is it, the Lexus dealer, not the Lexus dealership, but the, is the Chevrolet Chiv dealership on Route 22? Uh, the employees there are saying that they had had lots of spotted lanternflies in their trees last year. So it's it's here. I have the feeling we're going to get hammered with it this year. Come August. You're going to find these red adults uh, on a lot of trees in Franklin Township. Yeah. Um, I found what I was looking for. I couldn't find it on my computer, but I have a hard copy. Um, this is what I wanted to um, put on a billboard. It's kind of hard to see, I know. No, that that would be great on a billboard. Um, that won't look that good on the 
on the digital sign that I was talking about, that's for sure. But that is a great idea. Um, hmm. Did you make that, Meg, or is that does somebody, is that like something you're allowed to just share publicly? This is another thing that I'm allowed to share publicly. publicly. So. Let me, let me try and think, I'll try and do some thinking if anyone else has any ideas about a good place that we can put it, but let me, let me think a little on that. Cause I think I do like that idea a lot. So, yeah, does anyone else have any other questions or comments? Great job, Megan. Thank you. Thank yes, you. Very great. Thank very you, great. Fantastic job. Yeah, you did a great job. I know it was a lot of work. So. I'm wondering if the uh, press has a question. Oh, let me ask. Hang on one second here. Hi, Bill. Hello. No, I'm actually it was very informative and uh, I have no questions. Thank you. Oh, actually, yes, I do. Make it. Oh, what's the ahead. next step now for you to get this gold gold award? Um, my next step is well, um, right now I'm trying to um, fill out my final report. Actually, so I'm pretty much done. So, um, <laughs> I'm just, I'm just. Finishing things up basically. Okay. So <clears throat> what was the requirement? You had to go out and give this presentation to everybody you could? Um, yeah, I set a goal for myself. I wanted to reach like five schools and I wanted to put my flyer up at a certain amount of trail kiosks. So I exceeded my goals. So <laughs> Okay. And and what schools in town did you give the presentation to? Um, okay, so I basically I I reached all the Franklin Township public schools except for um McAfee. Okay. And I also reached um Vanessa School, the Greater Brunswick Charter School. So oh. those are the schools I reached. Okay, great. And what when will you get the award? Um, well, first I need to finish filling out my final report and I need to submit it to the Girl Scout Council and mm -hmm. then they will get back to me about um, an interview that I'm going to have with them. And then after the interview, they'll let me know. Okay. What troop are you with? I'm sorry. What troop are you with? Oh, I'm in um, Girl Scout Troop 60607. Okay, thank you. Thanks, no Bill. Good thing I had no questions. <laughs> thank you so much. Thank you. All right. So, yeah, I guess seeing that no one has any other questions or comments, just everyone remember if you can please take Megan's survey that she put in the chat and you know i hope to continue working with you meg i think this was great it was a super pleasure to work with you thank you so much now okay. you can adopt the trail too now there you go <laughs> that's the platinum platinum award <laughs> thanks megan if you have anything you need anything feel free to reach back out okay Okay, thank you so much. Oh, uh, you're welcome. Thank you. You're welcome to stay on if you want, or if you want to get off, feel free to. Okay, thank you so All much. Right. Bye. All right. All right. Wasn't that great? I was so impressed by that. I really was. I enjoyed that. Yeah, that was very good. Mm hmm. All right, and, and thank you, thank you, Chuck and Tara for. I, I reached out to you guys. I advised her to get more help input from you guys, and you really took her to the next level. So thank you. Uh, no problem, no problem at all. So uh, Jim, is it okay if we continue with the input with the um, new business only because there is some new business to it? I had to add one thing to the agenda last minute. 
Absolutely, go right ahead. Thank you, I appreciate it. Um, so at the uh, council meeting, the Franklin Township Council meeting last night, the um, council adopted a resolution allowing the return to in-person meetings starting as soon as the notice can be properly advertised. Um, so our meeting is today, which is of course the day right after this has happened. So, you know, couldn't notice that, um, but our August meeting will be noticed and can be held in person. So um, that's exciting, I think, right? Um, but what we have to do is adopt a new meeting schedule for the remainder of 2021, um, which I am going to, you know, let me show it to you because it's just easier than me reading it. It still would be, I went with still, you know, our normal schedule, second Wednesday of every month, seven o'clock, um, except it'll just, you know, of course be in person. Hold on. I have to figure out how to share this one second here. Share. Okay, let's see now. Uh, okay, so um, August 11th, September 8th, October 13th, November 10th, December 8th. So same dates, uh, seven o'clock. Again, we'll go back to the conference room starting August 11th. Um, I wrote up a quick resolution. Um, us to just kind of show that we've adopted it and I can you know read it to you if you want but basically what it says is we couldn't meet in person since June of last year because of COVID uh, pandemic and restrictions imposed by the state of New Jersey on June 4th 2021 those were lifted for indoor gatherings the council passed a resolution just last night saying that we can resume in person meetings once adequate notice is able to be provided to the public and once our committee adopts an in person meeting schedule this resolution basically says that we're adopting adopting it tonight at our regular meeting and that the meeting schedule is attached um, and that we will resume on August 11th, 2021 at 7 p.m. in the large conference room at the Franklin Township Municipal Building. So um, that's what we have to do. You know, we have to do that to return to the in-person meetings. But I just wanted you all to know that you know, same meeting schedule. And if we're all good, I I would assume probably need a motion to approve that. Can we discuss it first? Sure. So um, I just have a couple of questions. Like, so do we do we have to? <laughs> like, so I'm just like, this is one of those pandemic things where we only did it because we. You know, we, you know, we only tried this out because we had to, but is it 1 of the things that is actually working for us? And if we want to consider keeping it, I wanted to put that out there. That's 1 of my questions. The other question is, is, um, is the conference room adequate spacing with current recommendations for social distancing that it remain? Um, and as somebody who works in a school, right? Like, we're still, mm -hmm. being, you know, advised. Um, you know, to be at least three feet, you have to be three feet, you know, uh -huh. from six to three, um, and then masked if you are not vaccinated. And legally, we can't ask each other, right, if we're vaccinated or not. Um, but then are we going to have these meetings with masks, you know, um, or is, are we better off doing keeping them remote for a while? I'm not opposed to being in person. I just want to like have an open conversation. I don't think we should automatically jump back to in person meetings without really thoughtfully thinking about it. Mm -hmm. Mayor, you want to take that? But sure. So, yeah, the the council wants the town to move it as, as a whole. So it's all it's all meetings are now in person meetings as soon as the advertising uh, can be done. So. Um, why? Why? Because it's an open public meeting, and this was a, a means of protecting ourselves. And the situation, as of last night, had evolved to the point where I was finding it hard to um, say we we should continue doing those meetings uh, and uh, virtually. Um, the preferred way to do it is in person. Um, I, I will say, uh, until yesterday, we were having um, one 
well, an average of less than one infected person in all of Franklin a day. And Somerset County is the most vaccinated county in the state. 99% um, of the people in the hospitals are people who are unvaccinated. So a vaccinated person is protected. Um, I, I, I'm going to be very open. Today we had seven people infected. So it's like, um, you know, first thing you learn in probability is random doesn't mean evenly distributed. And I don't even know that this is a random process. So I hope this is just a, a blip. Um, but um, council wants the town to move as a whole. Uh, it becomes very difficult with patchwork. Uh, masks are required. Whether you're vaccinated or not vaccinated, masks are required. That's a good question. You know, we don't have a social distancing policy per se. It's a good question about the large conference room. Um, I'll, you know, our, the thing that we were, that held me back the most in recommending to council, um, going to open public meetings, I mean, in-person meetings, was um, the zoning board currently is hearing some contentious issues. And so I didn't want to have in-person meetings until it was safe to basically fill that room with people, um, or I shouldn't say safe, low risk, to fill that room with people. You know, when you're having one person in Franklin a day infected, it's hard to say that there's a high risk. Now, you know, we get this blip today. It certainly has my attention. I'm going to keep looking at it, but um, borrowing that, it's just, it's, it's hard to justify not having an in-person meeting when your infection rate is, I guess that would be about 1.25 people per 100,000 a day. So I hope that answers your question. It does. I have one more follow up, which is, um, did, did was, was hybrid considered? Like, once again, I'm trying to look at like the, like we were forced into this, the pandemic, but there's clearly been some advantages to it as far as inclusion is concerned. Um, and so has, is hybrid something that's been considered? Um, I, I will say we considered it. It was technically difficult using WebEx, I'm told. So, um, you know, and I, I knew I knew that question was coming because it's the first thing I thought of is, well, can we do it hybrid? Um, and it's just it's just difficult to do. And if you have reservations, I understand your reservations. You know, I'm, I'm I've com commonly said I'm in the 95th percentile of being cautious. I was wearing, I, you know, I work at a hospital. I was wearing two masks at work um, for three weeks after everybody else stopped doing that. Uh, I've finally gone down to one mask at a time. <laughs> um, so I'm I'm very cautious. I, I still won't eat in a restaurant. I'll eat outside, but I won't eat in a restaurant. So I get it. And certainly if somebody doesn't want to come because of COVID, I certainly would consider that a health reason and it would not count against you as far as attendance. Um, I, I get that, I get that. We, we all move at a different pace. And so Mayor Mass, you're saying will be required regardless of, okay, got it. Yeah, I mean, there, there are people saying I've been vaccinated. Why should I wear a mask? And, and uh, you kind of, um, touched on it. I don't know if you've been vaccinated or not. And it's, as government, I don't feel I can ask. Um, and, you know, when I'm in a crowd of people, you, you know, there's 10 people there. Are, are we going to go around the room every time someone comes in and announce their vaccination status? So right. to right. me, to me, it's wear a mask. Everyone wear a mask. Uh -huh. I, I wish people you know, I wish I could say wear a mask if you're not vaccinated. 
Um, but uh, frankly, I'm not sure everyone will follow that rule. Right. Would um, do you think maybe if if the um, meeting room, the public meeting room, if that's available on our day, I can see if um, if we can meet there instead because that's larger. You mean the council chambers? Yeah. The problem with that is we won't be able to televise it, and I discussed that with the attorney, right. and he wasn't happy with that. Yeah, that makes sense. Nothing is easy with this pandemic. Yeah, I agree. I mean, we're a relatively small committee here. Generally, don't get a lot of people coming. There's no reason why we all have to sit around that table. You know, we can we can certainly spread out. Mm -hmm. So for this committee, we can we can spread out. I, I the thing that that kept me up at night is a packed council chambers for a zoning board meeting for one of their controversial hearings. And this could change. You know, I watched CNN today and the whole day they were talking about Delta variant. And, you know, that, that was, we also passed a resolution last night indicating that the, um, the admin committee, which is four council members, myself being one of them, can meet and and change some of this stuff on, so basically make a, a sudden turn. Council meets once in July, once in August, and then won't meet, in, doesn't meet until the second Tuesday in September. You know, you, you can't run, I'll call it a war, you know, meeting every couple of weeks or once a month. Um, you need to be able to turn on a dime. And so the admin committee can be called quickly and basically advise the manager within his powers. We can't take, we can't do something that it takes a council to do, but we can advise the manager to do things within his power. So stay tuned. And and if people disagree with this opinion, I'm I'm open to hearing about it. Um you know it's it's there's no crystal ball. Mm -hmm. But it was just getting, you know, until today when we got seven, it was getting hard to justify not having in-person meetings when there's only one person in Franklin a day getting infected. Yeah. So. Thank you, Mayor. Yeah, like I said, the Delta variant out there, I think it's one of those things, um, you know, I think having the option is is really helpful. And I think that um, if the technology isn't where it needs to be, maybe something as a town we could continue looking into to get the technology where it is working efficiently and effectively, if nothing else, for township residents to be able to tune in like they are currently now able to do virtually. Um, just you mean a, doing one of the silver linings of this thing. You mean a hybrid method? You know, the, the yes. hybrid method I could see working for something in the council chamber where we have a videographer. And there's some equipment. I think that would be very difficult to automate it for the uh, large conference room. Um, but uh, you know, it certainly occurred to me. Let me investigate that more. It's it's a valid. It's a very valid question. I mean, people have been doing board meetings in school districts with the call in board members calling in for as long as I can remember. We're just talking about doing that the video versus just over the phone. You know, now that we've got this under our belt, I think it would be foolish to just to kind of like look away. Yeah, I mean, in a way, it was more democratic to have the video because you know, if you can't drive in, you can't you can't find a babysitter for your kids. You could you could video in. Um, you know, while people did complain that they're not having me meetings in person because they don't want to face us. In actuality, probably more of them got to speak this way. I, I hear you. You you know. You're not saying anything I haven't thought about. Well, oh, Mayor, it looks like you and Council have put a lot of thought into it, and I know you you know you're you're, you're trying to balance a lot of things, because as you said, people have their own pace. 
So there's people that, like you said, are still very cautious and those are throw caution to the wind. So, um, you know, you, you kind of have to do what, uh, like you said, very few infections up until recently. So I'm just wondering if it's like, a, you know, if, if there's a certain group like young people that that kind of tend to congregate together that are exposing each other to these things. That's well, why I hear it's the post. The infection I look, rate. I look at that data. <laughs> um, that I, I graph that uh, all the time. Let's see. Um, are we? Can I share? Tara, Tara, can I share the, my screen? Tara, you're muted. I'm sorry. I'm making the presenter one second. Hang on. Uh, it's passing up to you. Okay, you should be good now. So what do I do? At the bottom, if you click share. Ah, uh, yeah. Okay. Um. There you go. And then you just pick whichever one you want to. There you go. Okay, so there's a complicated looking graph. Are you able to see the graph? Mm -hmm. Yep. And this is the beginning of the pandemic back in April, and this is now. And the different um, bands um, are for different age groups um, over time. So what you can see is there's been a rapid expansion between 17 and 29 year olds. Uh, the reason why I did that particular age group is people beginning to drive um, through basically 30. Uh -huh. But um, we we were up very high in the very young, and that seems to be dropping recently. But uh, there's a huge uh, increase in um, the going from 17 to 29 year olds. Uh -huh. Yeah, and you know, one, one consideration this this virus is actually evolving very rapidly, and uh, it's uh, there's no reason to think that it won't, it could not evolve to have the same characteristics as the 1918 flu, where it actually uh, became more lethal for people with robust immune systems. Uh, in the 1918 flu. Uh, flu it was the young who died and died suddenly. So there were, uh, 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 there were a lot of uh, children who uh, woke up in the morning and their parents were dead and they were alive the night before uh, just because of the characteristics of that particular virus. And, you know, uh, the receptors are different, uh, but uh, it's all really, <laughs> On a biochemical level, it's all about you know binding affinity to receptors and and uh, uh, changing the uh, the, sh the shape of the protein uh, to uh, uh, defeat the immune system, uh, and and uh, so uh, it's quite possible we may have to pivot, Mr. Mayor, <laughs> uh, yeah. in the future. Get, we don't know. Get vaccinated. I you know I was criticized recently because I spoke at the Fourth of July. Uh, gathering and uh, or Independence Day gathering that we had, um, and um, I I had vaccinators there, and I said get vaccinated, and someone emailed me saying I should have talked about the risks of vaccination. There are risks, but so far, as best we know, three people, according to the CDC, three people have died of being vaccinated, of 300 million vaccinations given. Three people have died. Over 600,000 people have died from the vaccine. Mm -hmm. I, I, I don't think I don't think it compares. Um, uh, I ran to get my vaccine. My second shot was the day of a major snowstorm, and I told my wife, "I'm going. If I have to walk there, I'm going." Mm -hmm. um, 
So please, yep. anyone watching, anyone in the group, if you're not vaccinated, please, 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 unless you have a special medical issue, it's worth the risk. Please get vaccinated. And I'll just chime in there to say, I think the mayor misspoke briefly there when he said 600,000 died from the vaccine. No, he meant to say 600,000 died from COVID as compared to three from the vaccine. Thank you. Thank you. Yes. <laughs> Thank you. Yeah. So I guess, you know, the direction is, is that, you know, we provide the meeting notice to the clerk so that she can properly and adequately advertise to the public of our in-person meetings. Um, and the dates are the same as our virtual meetings, but I, you know, if you want to discuss more, that's absolutely welcome. I just want to let you know, I think the thought is, is that we make a motion to adopt this updated meeting schedule, which would be attached to the resolution, which basically states, you know, we're going back to in-person meetings starting with August. Sounds so, good. Anyone yeah. like to make a motion? So move. Second. I'll second it. Thanks, John. All right. All those in favor of the resolution, Tara, you had sent you had said the um, you had shared the resolution on screen. So, mm -hmm. so if if you want to look at it in more detail, but I think uh, I I kind of saw enough. Uh, also, um, the schedule. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Okay. Aye. Opposed? Aye. One opposed? Third. No, I, well, said, I said I a little late, I guess. Oh, okay, thanks, Mark. <laughs> <laughs> I wasn't sure. Nay, I guess you'd say nay. But okay, it looks like the resolution passes. All right, so well, I'm going to abstain from voting. Yeah, you, you got to remember to ask for abstentions, Jim. I just put that note in the chat. My bad. I'm sorry. Okay. I'm sorry. Was that Vanessa? Was that you or Anne, Anne Marie? I couldn't. It's Vanessa. Okay. Uh, okay. I'll get it in the minutes. Thank you. Okay, so I think the minutes only need to sometime. I think the minutes only need to say the number of persons who said yay versus the number of persons who said nay versus the number of persons who said abstain. You don't have to actually indicate the names of the people who voted that way. No problem. That's a good point. Thank you. Yes, I get the chat. I think the mayor was going to make a comment. No, I just said Vanessa I I, I wish there's times I could abstain on these things. It's it's very tough. I I I think I'm feeling what you're feeling. Like I said, I'm I'm not against it. I just I want us to move thoughtfully and cautiously and consider technology and expanding it. I hear you. I, I will pursue that. Okay. Thank you. All right, to move along. We are we all set to move along? Yes, we are. All right, why don't we go over old business? And I think we started some of that with the uh is there anything else to go over with the prescribed burns? No, we kind of talked about it um in the other section. I'm sorry, I had to move there. Okay, because I had my, my daughter and my husband are coming home now, so I had to move rooms. Um uh no, we went over the prescribed burns, so I think we're good there. The application is in and I'll keep you all posted how the meeting goes in July on site. Excellent. Okay, if you want to go over the butterfly walks, the firefly walks, and any updates. Um, yeah, so the butterfly walks were completed. They were led by Chris and Paula Williams um, through New Jersey Audubon. They helped with the registration. We put a flyer out. Um, we worked with recreation on that. Um, and they were very well attended, so that was good. Uh, the Firefly Walk again worked with recreation, um, and you know I spoke to Chuck about it. And he said it was you know a great event, and thanks you know to everyone for leading walks. And uh, so far, I think our partnership also with recreation has been going great, working with them on some of these events and getting using their registration on their website has been super helpful. 
Um, and you know, they have great staff there that help out with activities. So I think, um, I think it's been really good. Anyone have anything else to add? Had a great time. <laughs> Thanks to everybody. Uh, actually, uh, it was, it was sort of interesting. Uh, we had a bit of an IT fiasco leading up to that uh, Firefly walk. Uh, Tara had uh, asked IT to post uh, the walk flyers uh, on a number of different township sites, and they never got posted. Uh, and uh, but uh, we got back from a, a trip the Monday of that week beforehand and I looked at the parks and recreation site and there were only three people signed up for the walk. Uh, but uh, I got in touch with Tara and and uh, uh, and well I and I looked and, and there was just nothing posted on the township calendar on the on the uh, uh, township Facebook site. Uh, no, none of the township emails uh, distribution list messages uh, had anything about it. Uh, but uh, uh, Tara got IT to, to immediately post that, and at the same time, I uh, contacted Gloria Fittacaro, who is our recreation liaison, and told her the problem. And Gloria sent out email distributions as well about it. And within literally 36 hours, uh, we went from a registration of three people to 35. And uh, uh, so it's just it's, it's just important to m make sure that uh, words getting out uh, for these events and that uh, there hasn't been some problem uh, in the transmission of the of the information. How was the uh, timing of the event? Is, is it kind of early, you know, like, uh, you know, before sunset or is it was it, you know, adequate or too early or? Yeah, that's what I was going to just uh, jump in, Jim. As um, it was we, we talked about this. We debriefed it afterward, and all agreed that we need to start it later. Yeah. Um, Seven o'clock is is too early. And Tara, I don't know what you think about this. Sometimes I find it helpful after an event to like update like the flyer for the next year. Then, like, so <laughs> if we can do like a 2022 flyer now, because I think what happens is like we I think we thought the same thing last year, but we forgot. <laughs> So right. if we were to like make it like it was a seven thirty we were saying Chuck and um, Mark. Uh, we uh, we scheduled it for seven o'clock, and uh, I, I don't know did did you folks get I, I I tried to send a photo of the previous event yes. around to all of you showing the time of the sunset from the sunset bench, and it, on the photo it was eight eight fifteen so. The fireflies are not really going to come out in mass until after sunset. So it seems uh, they, they start coming out about 830. So it makes sense to maybe schedule this event for 730 or maybe 8 o'clock in the future. 7, so, 730. I think, I think 730, 730 would be good. We, we, we had 7 o'clock again this year, and I think we agreed that 30 minutes later would be ideal. Okay, I'm changing yeah. it. I'm changing it right now on a flyer for next year yeah. so that we remember. We got to leave time at the beginning to sing the song and everything. That's right. <laughs> <laughs> if you have more verses, Tara, we might have to start earlier. All right, that as <laughs> I'll leave it as is. Okay, excellent. Quite impressive. Oh, um, oh I'm sorry. There was one other thing that just came to my mind. So when we, uh, for the butterfly walks this year, I um, had a phone conversation with um, Kristen Paul Williams. I basically let them know to please include, there was a few bullet points that I needed them to speak about at each walk, which they did because that also gives us credit to the mayor, mayor's monarch butterfly pledge that we're involved in. So having those two butterfly events, that'll count as part of our activities that we have to do for that pledge. So something else that was easy to do. We usually do it every year anyway. So just making sure we discussed, you know, the points about um, pollinator habitat and what the township's pledge is and 
um, why it's important and things like that. That's really all we had to add. So that was um, that was a good, you know, thing to do for so that we could get points for both. Okay, so, so that finished the whole business. So, Jim, just a one more thing. Sure. Um, going back to the firefly hike, one of the things I know that um, we we noticed is the the there has not been any bench repair, and the that sunset bench at uh, John Clyde is it's like it's a hazard. It's like absolutely a hazard at this point. So if they're not going to replace it, it needs to be removed. Um. It might be more than that one, but that one really sticks out in my mind. And the kiosk is just barren. It's been barren. Um, so I don't know um, if we could just put some, give some love to that as well. Okay, I'm taking it out. So the sunset bench yeah. needs to be removed if not repaired or replaced. Right. Get replaced. Uh, it needs to be replaced. Yes, and uh, and. Uh, uh, I uh, removed all of the memorial plaques from the old benches. I have them in a plastic bag downstairs. Uh, but uh, I, I feel strongly that we should replace those plaques on the new benches, but uh, we need to do it with a better plaque. These were all plastic. Apparently, the, the uh, there's, I forget the name, but this was a, this this was an Eagle Scout who died, uh, Franklin Eagle Scout who had died, and his friends actually put up a number of benches with plaques for him uh, on those benches. But um, uh, I would I would like to see the uh, plaques replicated and placed back on the bench. Better plaques. Better plaques. Okay. There was also some talk at one point in time of allowing people to contribute to the purchase of a bench and then have their own plaque put on. But if we're going to replace the plaques yes. with the ones that already exist, then that would mean we'd need to add new benches, not just replace the existing. Yeah. Uh, yeah it's, I, 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 these, these benches must have must have been put in by way of some similar program because I think I think they're they're like telephone poles that are embedded in the ground, which I think only public works could do. Uh, and uh, so I I don't know. Does anybody know how these benches originated? Uh, uh, was it so? I don't know. Normally, I would jump in here and and being the longest serving member on the committee, be able to tell you something, but I have no idea. No. What Sorry. happened with the with the metal benches? Were, were we looking at metal benches at one point, like with the plastic coating? Um, are you talking about the new benches? Yeah. Yes. Yeah, so I last month when I talked to DPW, they've been ordered. So yes, they're the backless benches. Um, but the last time I talked to them, which what, you know, we have our monthly meeting, they have been ordered. So I'm hoping they're in or coming in soon and then they can be, you know, actually put in, but it was put in the budget and approved. Okay. So maybe so then that doesn't, preparing. Okay. So then that doesn't allow for the public to be able to like buy a bench, for example. Well, I think we have these benches, and I think the first thought was that the ones that are in really severe need of repair replacement would be taken care of with these benches, and then we can order more. Or maybe if there are enough, um, we can figure. I think there was a whole talk about trying to figure out a way to do that program with the memorial benches, but we have some benches now, as you all know, that are in need of like immediate replacement. Yeah, and, and and Mark, if they want to, somebody might, we could still do a donation. That we just already have the benches, and the money would be, you know, essentially reimbursed or use it for something else. But the, but the bench could have their names on it. Yeah, well, I, I think it seems to me that like it sounds like all the current benches have already been spoken for. At at at, at John Clyde, not everywhere. There's not any marquees on the ones at Bunker Hill. 
Okay. Yeah, I, I wasn't sure because some of those are in bad shape too, and I don't know if the tags were lost. I think Negri, there, there aren't very many on Negri as well. Are there, Marie? I... Yeah, so there was a, sir, I don't think that the bench's order has been. Replaced. Go, go ahead, Anne Marie. It needs to, there is a lot of damaged ones that need to be replaced. So I think they were a part of the original order that we were doing because we were covering Negri and um, John Clyde, if I recall. Mm -hmm. were, there, were there plaques, are there plaques on the benches at Negri? No. I don't think so. I don't think so. And I think the plaques that you removed, if I remember correctly, for John Clyde were all the same for the same individual. That is, is correct. That correct? Yes. yes, that's correct. So one person had their name on plaques on all of these different benches. That's five different benches, actually. Done that. Yeah, it was a friends and family kind of thing. So, but they but the bench is all eroded. Uh yeah, the the, the plaques are it's it's uh it's a grave plastic uh plaque that's just we need better plaques. deteriorated with time. We need better plaques. Does it make sense to try to do an inventory of the benches? Say like you know, there's like seven benches and. You know, Negri and you know what the state of each one of them is, you know, on our tra on, on our hikes or something like that. If if someone's on the trails, just kind of note how many benches, where they are, and what the what the conditions are. I'll take pictures um, of them. Yeah. We all have phones that take pictures. Terrible. Right. Yeah. I'll find out when I have my meeting with Carl on Monday exactly how many benches were ordered and what the thought were. My my thought was that we were ordering them to replace those that are in that are like dangers and you know really need to be replaced badly. Um, but I will find out what exactly where that order is like when it's expected. If it's not here yet, if it is, if you know when is it being installed. I'll get all those details on Monday. Chuck, did you say that there was five memorial plaques that you collected? I think that's right, Mark. Uh, I've got I can't I can't think of five benches at at Grigstown, to be honest with you. I can only think of three. Um, <laughs> I can go downstairs and get the bag and count them. <laughs> but well, and one thought would be to put all the tags you know to have them redone and put them all on one bench and then allow for others. It would still be pretty limited, but he would be able to allow at least four other potential contributions to yeah. to be able to do the other benches. No, all those benches need that. Well, the, that thought, uh, the, your thoughts been expressed. <laughs> Some sort of a middle ground here. <laughs> Um, it's also important to not important for him, I should say, but the other thing is, is that the, um, we have, I don't know if you remember, but right when COVID struck last year, we had a presentation from a boy scout, um, that's working on his Eagle project and he had presented some, um, maintenance things he basically wanted to do at Griggs at, um, John Clyde Memorial Native Grasslands Reserve. One was to uh, basically fix up the kiosk. The roof was in need of some repair. Let me get to his actual action plan. Hang on one second. So he was going to um, begin construction of a new kiosk roof, remove the old roof of the kiosk, transport the newly constructed kiosk roof to the site and attach it, reestablish fallen fence bars near the kiosk, um, do some trail cleanup, um, place some trail markers where necessary and recover fallen markers, uh, have a separate group break off to complete any tasks that may not be completed quickly, and then do a final walkthrough. So um, I'm, I'll be working with them. I actually just got an email from them the other day basically saying like now, you know, can we kind of go ahead with it since, you know, COVID is, you know, much more low risk than it was before. So I'll get in touch with him too and tell him he can start working on the kiosk issues. Oh, the, 
That didn't include the benches though, right? Tara, no, that was just, you mentioned no. the kiosk, right? The kiosk, some fallen fence bars, some trail right. cleanup along the trails. But I just wanted to let you know that okay. since that email just came in and we were talking about John Clyde Grasslands Preserve. Well, okay. the, kiosk, the kiosk is in good repair. Yeah. Uh, the fences are another bear. Uh, they're okay. in pretty bad shape. Uh, oh, and can I, could I ask, uh, could Public Works remove the uh, aluminum backed hunting signs with all the dates for 21 and just take them off, take them back to the to print shop and use them for signs next year? Uh, it makes no sense to have outdated signs uh, in any of these places. And that, that also goes for hunting, hunting signs on trees, but we're trying to gradually just take them down. But uh, the old signs, the old aluminum sign is still up. All of the aluminum signs, which were placed there uh, just this year for the first time, uh, are still up. And, you know, it's not hunting season and, you know, uh, nobody real, really cares that it started in September 2020 and ended in, in our, our started in 2019 and ended in yeah. February 2020. I mean, it just, it's confusing. They're very densely worded anyway. And uh, uh, so, and, and by the way, I have an old, a similar old sign in my garage that I just like to know where the where the print shop is so I can take it and drop it off. Uh, this is one from that uh, subdivision on the red trail that uh, has a whole bunch of 2017 dates on it that, of course, are meaningless. Okay, the print shop that where they do the printing of those signs is just right at DPW. But when I see you next month, you can just bring it to me. Okay, well, uh, I mean, I could drop it off. Is it at Churchill Avenue? Yeah. Uh, I'll just, I can just go by there and drop it off. I just. Okay, just, whatever's yeah. easiest. Yeah, okay, we'll work it out. Thank you. Thank you. Um, one more comment about the signs. I don't know if you guys noticed this in your trails, but like they, they hung up new metal uh, breathe easy, no smoking breathe easy signs. I know on my trail, like they left the plastic. Like the, you know, the, you know, if you buy something new, just like the plastic off before you hang it up. Like they mm -hmm. left it on, and I'm sure they were thinking maybe that was going to help it. But now the plastic like melted, like on. So I was trying to peel it off. Oh no! And then it gets okay. all like a mess now. So just in the future, if if that comes up again, Tara, I don't know if they say anything to you, but like if they're going to hang up no. signs, we could just ask them to remove the plastic because the sun's going to, you know, melt it onto the sign, and then it's not as nice looking. Okay. Yeah, no, I didn't know about that, but I will pass it along. And, and um and then I know Mark had put in the chat that maybe we should stock up table tabling the PTP, which I agree is a good idea. Um, but one final thing I wanted to bring up as far as like the hikes. Um our last meeting or second to last meeting, we talked about doing some more hikes this summer. And I was just wondering if that was still something we wanted to schedule. If we wanted to schedule any more uh, hikes. Sorry, I had to plug my computer in. <laughs> um, that's fine with me. Yeah, I mean, it's it's uh, it's up to you guys. Did you have like themes for hikes that you wanted to do, or just at places? I mean, we can, um, yeah, we can absolutely do that with just our committee members. You mean not working with like Autobahn or anything like that? Okay. Yeah, I think that would be great. Do you want me to work with, um, I can work directly with like you, Vanessa, to come up with some places and Chuck or whoever else wants to be involved. Maybe we can do like a small, like, you know, WebEx or something I can set up for another day and we can just kind of go through that if that works. Oh, sure. Chuck, I can't, you're, you're, you're uh, muted, Chuck. No, I'm very happy to schedule them. Uh, uh, and uh, I would be, I think it'd still be great if we could work with recreation on this. They're, they're, they're actually anxious to do it. They're asking me, you know, can we schedule some mics? Uh, so, but, yeah, uh, anyway, 
And by the way, Diana went and retrieved the signs, the memorial signs. There are three of them, Mark. Okay. Aha, so my count was right. All right. <laughs> You're a better counter than I am. Well, I just I couldn't. I was trying to. I thought through all the places I could recall where I'd seen a bench, and I'm like, that's all I could come up with in my head. So um, that's all right. It's just Good I was much. just I was I was interested in knowing where the other two were because maybe I hadn't been well, to I those spots. I couldn't figure it out. So. <laughs> that's cool. Should yeah. we perhaps consider some other? We've done quite a bit of stuff, I think, between Audubon and ourselves. A lot's been done at Negri and and John Clyde Memorial. Um, should we consider some of our other trail options? I think in particular between, I think we did one not too long ago at Bunker Hill that I wasn't able to make. Um, the other one I think is an, currently kind of a great unloved and it may be due to conditions is Butler. Uh, I would like very much to take people out on Butler Road, Road trails and actually we have multiple trails there. Uh, I'm actually taking out uh, Kara Holster's Girl Scout troop in the near future to do a stream cleanup uh, on the Butler Road trails. That's 23rd. Are they going to go? That's are they going to go out there with machetes? Because a lot of times at this time of the year, you kind of need that for that trail. Uh, so. uh, well, uh, yeah, I'm going to go out with a string trimmer and trim trim down some grass on certain parts of the trail there, but. Uh, uh, la, 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 I didn't hear that. <laughs> <laughs> Arrest me. <laughs> <laughs> no, I'm all for it, Chuck. I just don't know what we can or cannot say uh, here uh, in the old but, public uh, forum. Yeah, well, uh, I'm getting old enough. I'm past the point of caring. <laughs> <laughs> um, you know what I thought would be a nice trail walk to do one of these days and maybe it's better in the fall maybe this is better suited towards the fall but and we could work with rec on this like a storybook or it's like a story trail and it's kind of like even if we did it at a small trail like i know we have that very small trail that we don't use too often at memorial forest even like somewhere like there and you just kind of walk we have to like put some thought into it but you could set up spots where we stop like for certain parts of the story and it could it's really kind of more geared towards kids but i thought that might be fun and like a little different and it's short so we can get some smaller kids out there maybe um i'd have to put some thought into it but i'm sure rec would have some great ideas about how to make that happen i did see at colonial park you know at colonial park they have that wooded area and you can walk through that circle trail a Girl Scout did a storybook trail there. So she basically took pictures from a book and had them laminated and put them along different pieces of the um, trail. This way, when you walk by, you can read the whole story. Um, but that's more of just like a, you walk through it yourself, but they have these really cool art walks or story walks that I thought would be interesting to do. So maybe we can work on something like that. Maybe that is better for the fall, like when it's more autumn-like. Where do you get the story? Well, you just pick one that, you know, uh, we'd have to think and hard and pick a good one that will work, you know, for everyone, but um, just, you know, that's, something. That's, yeah. That's fun. I, I, I'd be happy to help with that. Yeah, actually, uh, we, uh, another trail that you might want to think about is Flimmer Preserve. Mm, it's, yes. It's, it's my understanding that uh that's actually state park property that's leased to the township is that uh i i don't know if that's correct or not but uh we did a flimmer preserve walk actually with recreation uh and uh uh we walked along the canal we walked actually starting at kingston lock then walked through flimmer preserve underneath the tunnel uh there and walked up to rockingham and back, mm -hmm. it, was for, it was for families, for kids, uh, and so on. And uh, uh, we actually used Linda Barr's book. Uh, she has a nice book uh, called, uh, what is it? Uh, the Bridge Tender's Daughter. Okay. The Tender's Son. Uh, very good, colorful illustrations that are big enough you could show to a group. Uh, and and uh, so we can talk about the canal, as well as uh, Rockingham and uh, and the uh, Flamer Preserve Trail. Uh, uh, yeah, and, uh, it, that's it, great. It was a very, very nice story. 
Oh, I like that. So maybe we'll put that on the agenda more for the fall, but for the summer walks, um, Vanessa and Chuck, I can kind of work with you directly and we can try and schedule sure, at least sure. another nature trail, nature yeah. trail walks, you know, sometime in August. I'm, yeah, I'm willing I, to participate if I'm available. Okay. Uh, that. Thanks, Mark. Uh, it's great. It's great to have you along. So, uh, take yeah, my, my previous suggestion of Butler again, I would be wary. Um, we found some ticks on ourselves just after the firefly walk. So I can only imagine right. Butler will be 10 yeah. times worse. Right. Well, actually the yellow trail on Butler is in, uh, uh, good shape. That's the 1 that loops around. Uh, 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 10 mile run goes down to the golf course. She crosses shallow water. Uh, and, uh, come around on the other side of 10 mile run. And I actually had the girl scouts out there. 2 weeks ago. Uh, they've done a really nice stream cleanup job uh, in that area. They cleaned up a lot of golf charge, course trash <laughs> that was swept down the stream. And uh, uh, I showed them the entire trail and they, they, they were really quite happy with it. Yeah, I forgot. I kind of was thinking more of the other side. So yeah, it's a good yeah. suggestion. We could certainly, we could certainly run a Butler road one on that side of things. And it's yeah. in general, that's a lot less grown in and has a lot less undergrowth and, mm -hmm. and so forth than the other side. Sure yeah, in, in right. terror, like I got uh, this before I don't say that loud so I don't forget, but I've, I've never I've never heard of a storybook walk before, which is kind of crazy because <laughs> I'm all about books and I love like, you. <laughs> um so I was thinking about the story um going on a bear hunt. I don't know if you're familiar with that book, but it's just like we're going on a bear hunt. You're going to catch a big one. It's a beautiful day. We're not afraid. And then you go, oh, oh mud and you squelch, squirt, squelch, squirt, and oh, swishy grass, swish, swish, swish. I think it would really lend itself to like having cards and then having the kids do that. Like squelch, oh, squirt, it. squelch, squirt, get to the next location, read the next oh, section, yeah. and act that section out. And I could see that being a nice kind of a looping if, if I'm understanding yeah. what you're describing. Yeah, perfect. Um, that would be great. Yeah. yeah, and maybe we could even do that at, at Bunker Hill and we could do mm -hmm. part of that in the red trail and the blue trail and maybe in, in, in the yellow. Like you're saying, yeah. it's geared more for younger kids. I think that would be a good one. Yeah, I love that. I think that's great. And that's probably, I think it is probably more of like a fall thing. So maybe we can shoot to do that in like September, October. Yeah, I, mean, I don't think it needs to be a fall thing. I, 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 we could do that in August. Okay. All right. Well, we'll meet and talk about it. I'm glad, okay, that'll okay. work. Yeah, sure. I think that'll be great. Okay, and then one last, have you guys ever been to this trail in, um, gosh, now I'm not gonna remember the name of it. It's in Montgomery Township. Um, oh, what's the name of that trail we went to? I'm sorry to put you on the spot. What's it in uh, Fairland? Montgomery? Remember the circle? It had all those art on it. What's the, uh, no, it's like, uh, sun, sunrise, 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 park, yeah. sunrise park in Montgomery. It's like a, it's a 1 mile, just circular trail, but along it, it within the wooded areas, they have art that's been done by local artists. And some of it is just like, you know, art made out of logs that have been stacked together. Some is a statue, some, but it's like hidden in the wooded areas. And it was super cool. Um, if you're ever in that area, I guess it's off great. The great road. Uh, it's right by that big park in Montgomery too. Man, why, it's like a small little tiny park next to a big park right off a of great road in Montgomery. I'll look it up, but it's really cool local art. And that might be something to think about maybe trying to get, you know, done in the future maybe too. I, I saw that and I thought it was fun. And it sounds like something you can engage the community in that's bigger than just the trail. So absolutely. And Rec would probably love that too. Rec would probably really enjoy that. So, but yeah, so we'll talk about all those things, but yeah, we'll definitely get another walk in for August, you know, for sure. I'll, I'll uh, set something up with you guys tomorrow. Thank you. Thank you. All right. I think that about does it. Can we uh, hold off on the uh, pathways and trails plan until next meeting? So move. Yeah, we, we, we can wait on the PTP, but did we? Did we have anything to, to finish the old business? There was updates on previous grant work and status for North South trail. Yeah, I've been keeping that on just to like have on when there's something to report. So I reached out again. I have not heard back yet. 
Um, so I will, I have it on my calendar tomorrow to reach out again, like every day after our meeting, I reach out to them and try and get a status report. So, um, yeah, try and try to get some more meeting and information, have a meeting with them. It's just a matter of getting, seeing if we can get the right people in the, in the same room together. So you'll just keep it on the agenda. Yeah, I just want to leave it on the agenda so it's like a placeholder so that we, you know, the discussion item, you know, as soon as there's something to discuss. <laughs> okay. I'll make a motion to adjourn. Second. <laughs> All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Aye.